say the words? Yeah, we'll just the words themselves. Yeah. I keep writing the oh. Okay, so I want to talk about protein first as part of the food talk, okay? Um, and nobody here has had the food talk yet. Okay. Now generally the food talk is about two hours, but I'm not gonna give you all two hours right now. I'm gonna stick right now to the part about protein, amino acids, um, as, a subsection, as a subsection of the, sub, of the topic on meat and why we don't have to eat it. Okay. All right. Now, your paper. Yeah, I have plenty. <laughs> I have plenty. Wow. Thank you. Sure. Okay. The great myth that we are exposed to it is the idea that um, you need to eat meat for protein, right? You heard that before, right? The argument that, um, uh, that you need protein, which is true, but then the, the secondary part of that argument, which is not true, which is that you need to get the protein from an animal source, from a meat source, okay? That's what I'm gonna address now. now the important thing to realize is that unless somebody knows what the amino acids are, knows everything about the amino acids um, and how they function and how they um, become protein, okay, unless the person who is talking to you about this subject of protein knows more than you do about amino acids and, and protein structure, then there's really very little reason to listen to them. Okay? So someone who wants to talk about protein but does not understand the essential facts about what amino acids are, they're not really someone who it's worth your time to speak with on the subject because um, you're not equal. <laughs> you're not in equal levels of information. And whenever you're dealing with someone who knows a lot less than you, um, it's usually better just to be quiet and let them know their little bit and you know what you know and you do what you're going to do and not try to take it personally that they don't know anything, not, not get offended and not necessarily try to teach them everything either. Okay? Alright, so here's a story. Heard of amino acids, right? Mm -hmm. But do you know what they are? They're the building blocks. I learned that in school too. Yes, they're the building blocks. That's all we ever, ever know about amino acids. That they are the building blocks. All right. Well, what the heck does that actually mean? Okay. What it means is that every single kind of protein on Earth, every one, every, and I'm talking about from the history of Earth into the future, all proteins are constructed from only 20 amino acids. Amino acids are the basic unit that protein is going to be used uh, for construction of protein, okay? So the analogy that I like to use is that uh, the amino acids are letters of an alphabet, okay? They're the letters of an alphabet from which every word in the language get spelled from. Okay? So, if you notice, all of the words in the English language are all spelled from the same 24, 26 letters, right? However many there is. Okay? In the same way, every single kind of protein that exists on Earth is made from only 20 amino acids. Now, some living beings don't use all 20. Okay? Like an amoeba or, or certain simpler forms of life may not, by any means, use all 20 amino acids. We do. Other, a lot of mammals do, more complex organisms, they're going to use all 20. But the only thing that differentiates us from, say, a dog is the order and the quantity and the location of the amino acids in, in the protein uh, molecule. Okay? But the amino acids themselves are the same. So the dog and me have the same 20 amino acids, but one order and one structure of those 20 equals dog, and another order, another structure equals us. Does that make sense? Okay. 
Now there's only 20 amino acids, and 10 are called essential, and 10 are called non-essential. Okay, heard of that before? A non-essential, a non-essential amino acid means that that's an amino acid that your body can, can construct on its own. Okay, it does not need to get that from an external source. An essential amino acid is one that has to come from food because your body cannot make it. Okay? And there's 10 essentials and 10 non-essentials. And none are without food? None are essential means you don't need it. And the reason why you don't need it is because you can already make it on your own. Your body can, can synthesize those. Yeah, it yes. produces. Yes, it can synthesize those. They're not. They're not essential, exactly. Okay? Now, what is important to realize is that protein gets constructed from scratch every time. Every organism builds its own protein from scratch. And, and I'm going to elaborate on this. Okay. What does um, from scratch mean? It means that, um, that the living being itself is going to take the amino acids and through the intelligence of the divine, which is the part we don't quite understand, is able to synthesize its own protein. Given its amino acids, it makes dog or makes human. Or, in the case of what I'm going to use now, it makes elephant. Okay, so let's take an elephant for example. An elephant eats only grass. Okay, grass and leaves. Okay, and the elephant eats the grass, and through the multiple stomachs that the elephant has, it's able to liberate from the grass, which has not been cooked, first of all. From the grass, it's able to liberate a certain amount of the amino acids. Okay, so the amino acids are, are in the grass. Okay. All 20 are in the grass? No. And I'll get to that in a minute. But a lot of them are. Okay? The majority of them are. Okay? So in the grass are the amino acids that the elephant needs to build elephant. It, it releases from the grass through its multiple stomachs the juice, so to speak. And in the juice is the amino acids. And then once that juice is floating in the blood of the elephant, the elephant builds itself. Does that make sense? In other words, once given the amino acids, the organism constructs itself from scratch. Now why do I say that? Because the argument that we're hearing in, in society today, in, in, in this culture, is that, is that we have to take protein that has already been constructed and use it for our own protein source. Okay? So let's say, take a chicken for example. Okay? A chicken looks like a chicken, right? It's already a chicken. That means that the protein has already been constructed. Does that make sense? Chicken's already a chicken. It already built itself. Does that make sense so far? No. Don't eat for the moment. Okay. Concentrate. It'll be a few minutes. Okay. Chicken has already been constructed as chicken. That's why it is chicken. So it looks like chicken. That's why it's running around like a chicken. It built itself already. It ate grass. It ate seeds. It ate whatever the heck chickens eat and turned it into chicken. Now, already constructed protein, and now you're going to eat it. Okay, you're going to eat the chicken because you were told that you got to get your protein and you got to get it from meat and chicken's a meat. Okay, so you eat the chicken, thinking that it's going to help you get protein. Okay, what are you going to do with the protein once it's swallowed? What's your body going to do with it? Digest. Digest it. What does that mean? Break it down. Break it down into what parts? Thank you. Okay, so this is now we're getting somewhere. Even if you take protein that was already constructed as a chicken, your body isn't going to use it like that. It doesn't use protein that's already been constructed. It can't. It has to break it back down to the amino acid level, whereby it would then start the construction again from the beginning to build a human protein. Because human protein and chicken protein are not the same. They're different. Of course they're different. They look different. And if you were to use chicken protein in the form that you received it, guess what you would look like? A chicken. Yes, you would. Why don't you look like a chicken? You don't look like a chicken because you break it down out of chicken into amino acid, and then rebuild it back up from the beginning. 
that make sense? Necessarily every 